name of the Lord. All nations compass me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. For the Lord hath done a mighty act with his own arm. He hath trampled down death by death and become the firstborn from the dead. He hath delivered us from the depths of Hades, granting the world the great mercy. Thy martyrs, O Lord, in their courageous contest for thee, received as the prize the crowns of incorruption and life from thee, our immortal God. For since they possess thy strength, they cast down the tyrants and wholly destroy the demons' strengthless presumption. O Christ God, by the mercy of our souls, since thou art merciful. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Liberator of captives, defender of the poor, physician of the sick, and champion of kings. O trophy bearer, great martyr George, intercede with Christ God that our souls be saved. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. The mystery which was hidden from everlasting and was unknown of the angels. O Theotokos was revealed through thee to those who dwell upon earth in that God having become incarnate in unconfused union of his own good will accepted the cross for our sake whereby he raised again the first created and has saved our souls from death. is risen from the dead, he who is the first fruits of those that slept, the firstborn of creation, and the creator of all things created. He hath renewed by himself the nature of our corrupt race. Wherefore thou shalt reign no more, O death, for the Lord of all hath nullified thy power and dissolved it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. When thou didst taste death in the flesh, O Lord, thou didst check bitter death by thy resurrection and didst make man to prevail over it, restoring victory over the old curse. Wherefore, O supporter and champion of our life, glory to thee, both now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Thee who art the mediatrix for the salvation of our race, we praise thee, O Virgin Theotokos, for in the flesh assumed from thee, after that he had suffered the passion of the cross. Thy Son and our God delivered us from corruption because he is the lover of mankind. Because of thine immutable divinity, O Lord, and thy voluntary sufferings, Hades was overwhelmed and moaned within itself, saying, Verily I am in dread fear of the person of this incorruptible body, for I see the unseen fighting me secretly, and behold those whom I have held shouting, Glory to thy resurrection, O Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
Let us believers speak of divine things, of the secret of thine inscrutable crucifixion, of thine ineffable resurrection. For today have death and Hades been led captive, and the race of man have been invested with incorruption. Therefore do we cry in gratitude, glory to thy resurrection, O Christ, both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, O Theotokos, the incomprehensible and boundless, consubstantial with the Father and the Spirit, hast thou secretly held in thy womb. And by thy birth-giving we have learned to glorify in the world the act of the one immiscible trinity. Therefore, with gratitude we cry to thee, Rejoice, O thou that art full of grace. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The company of the angels was amazed, and they beheld thee wombered among the dead. Yet thyself, O Savior, destroy the power of death, and with thee raising up Adam, and releasing all men from hell. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Wherefore, O women, disciples, do ye mingle sweet-smelling spices with your tears of pity? The radiant angel within the sepulchre cried unto the murdering women. Behold the grave and understand, for the Savior is risen from the tomb. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Very early in the morning did the murdering women run lamenting unto thy tomb. But an angel came to warn them, saying, The time for lamentation is past. Weep not, but announce unto the apostles the resurrection. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The murdering women, more despairing spices, they drew near thy tomb, O Savior. But the angel spake unto them, saying, Why number ye the living among the dead? In that he is good, he is risen from the grave. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We adore the Father, as also the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity in one essence, crying with the seraphim, Holy, Holy, Holy art thou, O Lord, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In that thou didst bear the giver of life, O Virgin, thou didst redeem Adam from sin. And didst give to Eve joy in place of sadness. And he who was incarnate of thee, both God and man, hath restored to life those who had fallen therefrom. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia.
brilliant angel of sweet words startled them and say, Why seek ye the living one in the grave? He is verily risen and hath emptied the tombs. Know ye therefore that the changeless one hath changed corruption to incorruption, and say to God, How dreadful are thy works, for thou hast saved mankind. Thou didst verily deliver the captivity of Zion from Babylon, O word. Likewise draw thou me out of suffering into life. They who sow in Timon with divine tears shall reap with rejoicing the sheaves of eternal life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. With the Holy Spirit every gift is good, for he doth shine forth together with the Father and the Son, and in him doth all creation live and move. If the Lord buildeth not the house of virtues, then vainly do we labor. But if he defend and protect our lives, none shall prevail against our city. The saints are verily the higher of the fruit of the womb, and they have not ceased to be thy sons in the spirit, O Christ, and thou art like a father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. By the Holy Spirit hath all holiness and wisdom been observed, for he is the creator of all essence of creation. Therefore let us worship him, for he is God, as is the Father and the Word. Happy are they who fear the Lord, for they walk in the way of his commandments and eat of the fruits of universal life. Rejoice with gladness, O chief shepherd, as thou beholdest thy children's children round about thy table, offering branches of good deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, all the riches of honor are of the Holy Spirit, and of him, too, is grace and life for all creation. Wherefore, he is to be praised with the Father and the Word. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be so established that it shall not be saved. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be so established that it shall not be moved. Praise the Lord with a new praise. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be so established that it shall not be moved. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For holy art thou, O our God, who rest in the saints, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Pray to God with his saints, praise him in the firm foundation of his power. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And that we may be accounted worthy to hear the holy gospel, let us pray to the Lord God. Lord have mercy, Lord, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. to thy spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Let us attend. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. 
and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus. Your Mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know mine iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humbled, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hadst desired sacrifice, I had given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit, a heart that is broken and humbled. God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and thy good pleasure unto Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built up. Then shalt thou be pleased with a sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Through the intercessions of the apostles, O thou who art merciful, what at all the multitude of our transgressions, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, O thou who art merciful, what at all the multitude of our transgressions. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, brought out my transgressions. Jesus, having risen from the grave as he foretold, hath given unto us life eternal and great mercy. Save thy people and bless thy inheritance. 
Visit thy world with mercy and compassion. Exalt the horn of Orthodox Christians and send down upon us thy rich mercies through the intercessions of our all immaculate lady, veil, Tobos, and ever virgin Mary, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable body with powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable, glorious prophet, forerunner, and Baptist John, of the holy, glorious, all honorable apostles Peter and Paul, and of all the holy apostles of our fathers, among the saints, great hierarchs, and ecumenical teachers, Basil the Great, Gregory the Theologian, and John Chrysostom, Athanasius Cyril, and John the Merciful, Patriarchs of Alexandria, Nicholas of Myrus, Gerdon of Trimethus, and Tenectarius of Pentapolis, the wonder workers of our fathers, among the saints, Teton, Patriarch of Moscow, and Raphael, Bishop of Brooklyn, of the holy, glorious, great martyrs, George the trophy bearer, whose memory we now celebrate, Demetrius the Merce Dreamer, Theodore the Soldier, Theodore the General, and Venus the Wonder Worker of the Hiram Martyrs, Ignatius the Godbearer of Antioch, Caralambos and Ilius Serios of the Holy Glorious Great Women, Martyrs, Thecla, Barbara, Anastasia, Catherine, Kiriaki, Fotina, Marina, Paris, Diva, and Irene of the Holy Glorious Right, Victorious Martyrs of our Venerable and God-bearing Fathers who shun the ascetic life of Saint Barnabas, the patron and protector of this holy community of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of the holy, glorious, and right, victorious martyrs, Icapsimus, the bishop, Joseph, the priest, and Athalus, the deacon of Persia, Hiram Martyr, George of Neapolis, and Venerable Theodore, the confessor, Archbishop of Ancyla, whose memory we celebrate today, and of all thy saints, we beseech thee, O most merciful Lord, hearken unto the petitions of us sinners who make our supplications unto thee, and have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. On this day didst thou arise out of the grave and didst lead us from the bars and gates of death, thou who art great in compassion. On this day, both Adam danceth and Eve rejoiceth, and with them all of the patriarchs and the prophets chant unceasing hymns in praise of the godly power of thy dominion and might. Let heaven and earth dance today, and let them praise Christ God with one accord, for he hath raised from the grave them that were in bonds. All creation rejoiceth together as it offereth fitting songs unto our Redeemer, the creator of all. For our Having drawn mortals with himself out of Hades today as the giver of life, he exalted them with himself up to the heavens. He dasheth down the arrogance of the enemy and breaketh in pieces the gates of Hades by the godly power of his dominion and might. On November 3rd, in the Holy Orthodox Church, we commemorate the holy martyrs Kepsimas, the bishop, Joseph the priest, and Alethias, the deacon of Persia. A Kepsimas is slain by thrashings and cudgels, and Akepsimas friends by merciless stoning. On the third, Akepsimas is beaten and his fellow athletes stoned. A child prophesied that 80-year-old bishop Akepsimas would suffer for Christ. He told a member of his household that he would not return home, but instead go to his home on high. The king Safar raised a bitter persecution of Christians throughout Persia, and Akepsimas was apprehended and thrown into prison. The following day, Joseph, a 70-year-old priest, and Ephilas, a deacon, were also in prison. 
After three years of imprisonment and many tortures, Atepsimas was beheaded. Joseph and Aethilas were buried up to their waist in the ground and stoned to death. That night, by God's providence, Joseph's body disappeared, and a myrtle tree grew over Aethilas' body that healed all diseases and pain. The tree stood for five years before the wicked pagans cut it down. These soldiers of Christ suffered in Persia in the fourth century. On this day, we also commemorate the consecration of the temple of the holy great martyr George in Lydia in Palestine, as well as the deposition of his holy body therein. George's relics came from Nicomedia, where he suffered at the time of Emperor Diocletian. Anticipating his martyrdom, George begged his servant to take his relics to Palestine, where his mother had been born, and where he had distributed his large estate to the poor. The servant did so. During the reign of Emperor Constantine, pious Christians built the beautiful church to house the miracle-working relics of the great martyr. On this day, we also commemorate the higher martyr George of Neapolis and Venerable Theodore the Confessor, Bishop and Anakira. By their intercessions of Christ God, have mercy upon us. Amen. <clears throat> I shall open my mouth, and it will be filled with the Spirit. And I shall speak forth to the Queen and Mother. I shall be seen joyfully singing her praises. And I shall delight to sing of her wonders. As a living and copious fountain of Theotokos, to the strength in those who him thy praises, and I join together in a spiritual company for thy service, and in thy divine glory, make them worthy of crowns of glory. He who sits in clouds of glory upon the throne of the Godhead, Jesus the Most High God, came with mighty hand and saved those who cried out unto him. Glory to thy power, O Christ. All creation was amazed at thy divine glory. For thou, O unwedded virgin, didst hold within thee the God of all, and didst bear the eternal Son, who rewards with salvation all who him thy praises. As we the godly minded celebrate this sacred and all honorable feast of the Mother of God, come let us clap our hands together and glorify the God whom she bore. The godly minded children worship not the creature rather than the creator. But trampling upon the thread of fire in manly fashion, they rejoiced and sang. Oh, I praise the Lord and God of our fathers, blessed art thou. We praise, we bless, and we worship the Lord, the three holy children. In the furnace, the child of the Theotoko saved. Then was the time, now is its fulfillment. And the whole world gathers to sing. All ye works praise the Lord and magnify him unto all ages. Thou Theotokos, mother of life, let honor and magnify in song. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit with it rejoiced in God my Savior. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without chains bearest God the word, and are truly there, O Tophos, we magnify thee. For he hath regarded the holiness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and are truly there, O Tophos, we magnify thee. For he is that is mighty, hath magnified me in holy as his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout our generations. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and are truly fear of Tophos, we magnify thee. He hath shown strength with his arm, yet scattered. 
of the proud and the imagination of their hearts. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who read thou seen merits of the world, and her truly fair topos we magnify thee. Yet would do the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble in me, yet though the empty he hath filled the empty with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without stain bearest God the word, and are truly theotokos, we magnify thee. He, remembering his mercy, hath helped his servant Israel. As he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without sin bearest God the word, and the truly theotokos we magnify thee. Let all earth for mortals rejoice in spirit, bearing their lamps. And let the nature of bodiless minds celebrate with honor the holy festival of the mother of God and cry out, Hail, O blessed pure and ever virgin Theotokos. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy.
as the husbandry tilled by Christ, as one valiant in martyrdom. Let us sing the praises of wise and noble George, the fearless preacher of truth, the ever living and verdant branch that doth blossom with the fruit of the vine of eternal life, and that falleth up with the sweet wine of piety, and gladdeneth those faithfully observing the martyr's yearly memorial. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. As the husband retilled by Christ, as one valiant in martyrdom, let us sing the praises of wise and noble George, the fearless preacher of truth, the ever living and verdant branch that doth blossom with fruit of the vine of eternal life, and that welleth up with the sweet wine of piety, and gladdeneth those faithfully observing the martyr's yearly memorial. Wondrous and is God in his saints. We know thee as a brilliant star and as a sun in the firmament, pouring forth the beams of its far resplendent light, and as a son of the day, a goodly pearl of the great price, and a brightly shining gem, as one valiant in martyrdom, and the champion of the faithful in perils. Thus we praise and glorify thee, while observing thy hallowed feast, O prize winner George. In the saints that are in his earth hath the Lord been wondrous. As I voyage upon the sea, as I journey over hill and plain, as I sleep throughout the night, do thou keep me safe. And as I wake, do thou rescue me, O blessed great martyr George. Deem me worthy to perform every day the Lord's holy will, so that I may find in the day of dread judgment the remission of all <coughs> sins that in my lifetime I have wrought, who now flee unto thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
Most blessed art thou, O Virgin Theotokos, for through him that was incarnate of thee, his Hades despoiled, Adam's recalled from the dead, the curse is made void, Eve is set free, death is slain, and we are endowed with life. Wherefore in hymns of praise we cry aloud, Blessed art thou, O Christ our God, who is thus well pleased. Glory to
covenant of Isaac, you're not splitting us as we have to stay in your table. It is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. It's good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing psalms to thy name, O Most High. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, the Savior, save us. To proclaim thy mercy at dawn and thy truth by night. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, the Savior, save may declare that the Lord my God is fair and there is no injustice in him. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, the Savior, save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, the Savior, save us. the majesty and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. The Lord is King, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength and he hath girt himself. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. For he established the world which shall not be shaken. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. Cometh thy house, O Lord, in the length of days. O Son of God, who arose from the dead, save us who sing to thee, Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and immortal Word of God, who for our salvation is will to be incarnate. Of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, who without change is become man and was crucified. Oh Christ our God, Tra 
mankind and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages.
done. O Christ God, by their prayers save our souls, since thou art merciful. Liberator of captives, defender of the poor, physician of the sick and champion of kings, O trophy bearer, great martyr George, intercede with Christ God that our souls be saved. Do do. O Barnabas, thou becamest a perfect and faithful servant of the Lord. Thou wast the first of the seventy disciples, worthy to be the companion of Paul in his preaching. Thou didst prove to all that Christ was the Savior. Wherefore we celebrate thy divine memory with hymns and songs. O protection of Christians that cannot be put to shame, mediation unto the Creator most constant. O despise not the suppliant voices of those who have sinned, but be the quick, O good one, to come unto our aid, who in faith cry unto thee. Hasten to intercession, and speed thou to make supplication. Thou who dost ever protect, O Theotokos, them that honor thee. Let us pray to the Lord. Thou art God, and unto Thee we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. And unto ages of ages.
Brethren, I would have you know that the gospel which was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard by my, of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me be apart before I was born and had called me through his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia and I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none other than the apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Peace be to thee that readeth. Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee, O Lord. The Lord said, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades, being tormented, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime, you, you, you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this between us, you are a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee, O In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Good morning. Story of the rich man and Lazarus. One day our Lord was speaking to a group that uh, St. Luke identified as sinners and tax collectors. A very special group of the cream of the crop, right? And at that time also, however, there were Pharisees in the crowd who came not so much to listen to Jesus' teachings and be edified, but to pick it apart and uh, to uh, 
you know, find anything wrong with what he was saying. So Christ, oh, and of course they did condemn him, as St. Luke tells us, for associating with sinners and with tax collectors. So Jesus responded to this contempt that they showed by uh, giving a whole series of parables, of which this one that we read this morning was the final one, but all of them dealt with, essentially, God's love for that which is lost. He told the parable of the lost sheep, which speaks of the good shepherd who left his flock of 99 in safety in order to search the one that was dangerously lost. Next, he spoke of the lost coin, which featured the woman who had 10 silver coins but lost one. And so she turned the house upside down, sweeping and searching until she found that one last coin. And then, of course, after that, calling her neighbors to come and celebrate with her. And finally, it was the story of the lost son, <laughs> the prodigal, who was received back with joy and celebration when he returned to his loving father. And so with each of these parables, our Lord spoke of the great joy that followed the finding of that which was lost. He said of the lost sheep, I say to you that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Remember, he was saying this to the Pharisees who had just mocked him for gathering before sinners and speaking to them. Again, concerning the woman who rejoiced greatly when she found her lost coin, he said, likewise, I say to you, there is joy in paradise in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. And of the prodigal son, Jesus said, the, spoke of the father who said, bring the fatted calf and let us kill and celebrate for we, it is just for us to be, uh, uh, to eat and be married for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. All these stories about the lost being found in the great joy. So it was in this context that our Lord then told the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Now, what on earth does this have to do with the other parables? Clearly, uh, the rich man qualified as being lost. He was dead and buried his soul in Hades, and I think that you can't get much more lost than that. But is there some hint here, because of following in order, that there might even be found some grace for even the rich man, lost and in Hades, that he might come, perhaps, to a better end with rejoicing. Now, the conventional wisdom says no, that there must be an end to God's patience, that he will allow the lost to be found up to a point after which he will pour out his long withheld wrath in punishment. But of course, we cannot say that this is the orthodox position. We believe, as the psalmist declared, that his mercy endureth forever. The psalm does not say his wrath endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever, his loving kindness. The idea that the love of God for sinners must eventually give way to his eternal wrath is inconceivable to us who believe that God is love and can never change or act in any other way other than love. We do understand that the torments of those in Hades lies in their own inability to commune with love. They are not denied the love of God, but as St. Isaac the Syrian wrote, love acts in two different ways, as bliss to those who joyfully receive it, and as a burning fire to those who reject it. During his lifetime, the rich man had consistently rejected the love of God. Knowing the law and the prophets, he ignored them to invest only in his own pleasure <clears throat> and enjoyment. Beholding poor Lazarus at his gate, <clears throat> excuse me, no spiritual inkling awoke in him, no, no pang of, of any sympathy or compassion to comfort the suffering of this poor man and to better his situation. As St. Paul wrote, 
we shall each reap what we sow. Not because an angry God meters out long due justice, but because our souls are simply shaped <clears throat> by what we do in this life. <clears throat> if we shut ourselves off to love now, then we shall be unable to receive it then. This is how the church defines the torments of hell. It is like a fire burning, the fire of shame, the fire of anger, perhaps, the fire of hatred. Imagine <clears throat> if you've ever been angry before. I'm, I'm sure the answer is probably no, but one or two of you may have experienced a bit of anger. And imagine the worst, worst, worst anger that you've ever experienced. I'm talking about red-faced, bug-eyed, slobbering, uncontrollable, wretched anger in which you said or did things to which even today you burn with shame. Imagine that times God forever. This is the fire of hell, the burning torment, or it may be shame or any other thing. But those who reject love, this is what they expect. And this was <clears throat> at least part of the message of Christ to the Pharisees who rejected these sinners, these tax collectors, and would have nothing to do with them. They had no love for sinners. And then, indeed, they loved, like the rich man, they loved money more than people. I mean, this is what St. Luke says. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, scoffed at him, mocked him. They ridiculed his teaching. And the message is also to us who may withhold love, not embrace the love of God, flee from God continually in prayer. We all struggle to pray, but did you ever stop to think about that impulse that makes you want to not pray, to get on and bake waffles or do something else instead of your morning prayers, or to not be involved in tithing or, or giving alms or offerings or works of charity and every other thing that we might do to conform ourselves to the love of God? Shall we be contentedly self-righteous like the Pharisees? Shall we give ourselves to our own pleasure like the rich man? Shall we ignore every opportunity for repentance in this life and never be conformed to the love of God? Does our conscience ever cause us to shrink from God or his presence or to be very superficial in our interaction? We must repent of these things. We must change these things and become friends with God now while it matters. But the second part of Christ's message that I've been alluding to, seemingly counterproductive to the first, is that God's love never fails. We know that we should repent. We know that we should embrace the love of God. So why on earth would I say, but God loves you anyway? Isn't that like working? Oh, okay. I was with you, Father, and then thank God you, you let me off the hook there at the end, you know. No, that's not what I'm talking about. We really need to repent. We really need to learn how to love God and our neighbor as ourself. We need to renounce our sick and idolatrous self-love that always wants to take it easy on ourselves, comfort ourselves, and, you know, just relax. This is not the time to relax. This is the time to make effort. But what a fascinating story this is when we look at the rich man not just at punishment, but what was going on also in this story. Even in Hades, the rich man had some conversation with Father Abraham on the other side of paradise. He could see him. He could talk with him. This is a pretty poor form of communion with love, but it was something, wasn't it? He wasn't totally separated. He could talk. It was, it was enough, perhaps, to give him some hope. The rich man was made to understand that his indifference to love and mercy had brought him to this state, a spiritual awakening, an understanding. And he begged that his brothers might be warned, lest the same fate fall them. Could this be his first sense, if you will, of self-awareness and feeling of compassion? you know, save my brothers, that they don't wind up like me. And if it was, if he was for the first time waking up to these things, becoming aware of these things, 
asking for mercy on his brothers, was it simply too little too late? Was, well, were the books closed and the deal over? Judge went home, you know? And to be honest, I can't say. I really don't know what the fate of the rich man would be, you know? But, and certainly I'm not ready if you're thinking this, I'm not a universalist, I'm not going to say that all souls will be saved eventually by the love of God. But I do believe that the love of God is far greater than we imagine. And as the scripture says, that love never fails. Should we then go on sinning that grace may increase? No, says St. Paul, absolutely not. But consider, for example, we pray for our departed, right? We pray for all of those who have departed this life, or at least, you know, maybe, we, well, honestly, not everybody who dies gets prayers because they maybe they have no one but for our family we pray for them don't we and why do we pray for them is it just out of sentimental reasons or do we believe that our prayers can benefit them our prayers can comfort them but they're dead as the tree falls so it lays for all eternity or not if it if that were the case then we shouldn't pray for our departed but we do we pray for their comfort we pray for forgiveness of their sins. We pray for the great mercy in the hour of judgment. Something can happen. They cannot pray for themselves. If they find favor with God, they can pray for us. But we alone can pray for them, and we do so because we believe it has value to them, and it is merciful and an expression of God's love and the communion of love. We always pray for hope and for change. And we must always pray in hope for change in ourselves as well. No matter how we have sinned, no matter how indifferent to God and the needs of others we, have, we may have been, no matter how dead a soul we may feel that we already are, we must place our hope in God, our Savior, and His unfailing love. I have talked to people, perhaps you have too, who felt like, well, there's, it's no use for me. Uh, you know, I've sinned too much. God's written me off. I'm already judged and dead. Stupid man, stupid woman <laughs> to believe that. We must always hope. We must always believe in life over death, love over indifference. And I think that's, uh, we need to allow God to love us. We need to receive him joyfully into our household pledging our repentance, as did Zacchaeus. And in this way, the tax collectors and the sinners, believing this, believing the Lord's words, enter into the kingdom of heaven before the Pharisees. And we shall enter into the kingdom of heaven with love and not, um, not to be condemned if we follow and practice this love and prayer and hope at all times in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, by thy grace, wisdom. That guarded always by thy might, we may ascribe glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Bound with the desires and pleasures of the flesh is worthy to approach or to draw an ar nigh or to serve thee, O King of glory, for to serve thee is the greatest and terrible thing, even to the heavenly powers. Nevertheless, without unspeakable and boundless love for mankind, thou didst become man, yet without change or alteration. And as the Lord of all, this take the name of our high priest and deliver unto us the ministry of this liturgic and unbloody sacrifice. For thou, alone, o, o Lord our God, rulest over those in heaven and on earth, who are born at the throne of the cherubim. Lord of the seraphim and king of Israel, who alone art holy and rest in thy holy place. Wherefore I implore thee, who alone art good and art ready to listen, look down upon me, sinner, and I will drop thee, sir, and cleanse my soul and my heart from the evil conscience, and by the power of thy Holy Spirit enable me, whom in due to the grace of the priesthood, to stand before this thy holy table and to perform the sacred mystery of thy holy and immaculate body and precious blood. For I draw near unto thee and bow my head. Thou 
safe that these gifts may be offered unto thee by me, thy sinful and unworthy servant. For thou thyself redeemer offers and is offered and accepts and is distributed to Christ, O God. And unto thee we ascribe the glory to the other the fathers from everlasting, that all holy good and life in your spirit, now and ever, after ages, O Jesus. We who mystically represent the cherubim of the life giving to the of Christ with the gifts, let us now lay aside all the earth.
of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with thy spirit. and right to him thee to bless thee to praise thee to give thanks unto thee and to worship thee in every place of thy dominion for thou art god ineffable inconceivable invisible incomprehensible ever existing and eternally the same thou and thine only begotten son and thy holy spirit thou it was who did spring us from non-existence into being and when he had fallen away just raise us up again and didst not cease to do all things until thou hast brought us back to heaven and hast endowed us with thy kingdom which is to come. For all these things we give thanks unto thee and to thine only begotten Son and thy Holy Spirit. For all things of which we know and of which we know not. 
and for all the benefits bestowed upon us, both manifest and unseen. And we give thanks unto thee also for this ministry, which thou dost vouchsafe to receive at our hands, even though there stand beside thee thousands of archangels and ten thousands of angels, the cherubim and the seraphim, six winged many eyes soaring aloft, borne on their pinions, singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying. So these blessed powers be also master, love us, mankind, cry love and say, Holy art thou, O holy, thou then only begotten Son, and thy Holy Spirit. Holy art thou, O holy, and magnificent is thy glory. Who has so loved thy world as to give thy only begotten Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Who when he had come and had fulfilled all the dispensations of us, in the night in which he was betrayed, or rather gave himself up for the life of the world, took bread in his holy and pure and blameless hands. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it, and hallowed it, and broken it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Therefore, this saving commandment, and all those things which have come to pass for us, the cross, the grave, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the session at the right hand, and the second and glorious advent. Thine own of thine own we offer unto thee in behalf of all and for all. Again, we offer unto thee this reasonable and our bloody service, and beseech thee, and pray thee, and supplicate thee. Send down thy Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts here spread forth. And make this bread the precious body of thy Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of thy Christ. Amen. Changing them by thy Holy Spirit. Amen that to those who shall partake thereof they may be unto cleansing of soul, unto the remission of sins, unto the communion of thy Holy Spirit, unto the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, unto boldness toward thee, and not unto judgment or unto condemnation. And again, we offer unto thee this reasonable service for all those who in faith have gone before us to their rest, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially our all holy immaculate, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary. It is truly
among the first be mindful, O Lord, of our Father and Metropolitan Joseph, whom do thou grant unto thy holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health, and length of days, and rightly dividing the word of thy truth. And all mankind. Grant us with one mouth and one heart to glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Say, O Lord, that with boldness and without condemnation we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. and compassion and love toward man of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Look down, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, from thy holy dwelling place and from the throne of the glory of thy kingdom, and come to sanctify us. O thou who sitteth on high with the Father, and art here invisibly present with us, and vouchsafe by thy mighty hand to impart unto us thine immaculate body and precious blood, and through us unto all the people. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. 
O God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy upon me. Let us attend. Holy things are for the holy. Broken and distributed. Never does he
rivers and ocean depths, fire and hail, Seven. snow and ice, George stormy George wind George fulfilling George his command. Praise the
heavenly life, giving unto us the mysteries of Christ. Be Let thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory before the earth. Lord. 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 Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. <laughs> We give thanks unto thee, O Lord, who lovest mankind, benefactor of our souls and bodies, for the house vouchsafe this day to feed us with thy heavenly and immortal mysteries. Make straight our path, establish us all in thy fear, guard our life, make firm our steps. Through the prayers and intercessions of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all thy saints. For thou art our sanctification, and unto thee we ascribe glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the mercy come upon you through his grace and love to his man, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our whole glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Lord, 
May he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, by the might of the precious and life-giving cross, by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet, forerunner and Baptist John, of the holy glorious and all laudable apostles, of our Father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy we have now celebrated, of the holy glorious and right victorious martyrs of our venerable and God-bearing fathers, of St. Barnabas, patron and protector of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of the holy glorious and right victorious martyrs, Echepsimas the bishop, Joseph the priest, and Elithelus, the deacon of Persia, the great martyr George, the trophy bearer, Hiram martyr George of Neapolis, and the venerable Theodore, the confessor, bishop of Ancyra, whose memory we celebrate today, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and loves mankind. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. 